Hello, fellow travelers, and welcome to the Verse and Stars podcast. How are my loyal listeners? Thank you for your continued support. And remember, click the subscribe button, everybody. This is an amazing episode because Born in the Mothership is Harry Turner. He's the focus of a new documentary on Amazon Prime called Wildcat. Now join us as we go traversing the stars. Hello, Mr. Turner. Thank you so much for coming to the Verse and Stars podcast. Hi there. How's it going? It's doing incredibly well. I just want to say Wildcat was a phenomenal film. I had a pleasure of watching it, and I really look forward to talking with you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, and I, Wildcat has definitely been uh, a roller coaster of a journey for me, but I'm so you know thankful that you know I've had so much positive feedback from it, uh, and I'd love to hear what you think. I must say, I think it's amazing just how moving of a film that is, and I also think just not only is it important, I think, for people dealing with trauma to watch it, but it's important to understand the importance of the wildlife conservation being done as well. And I like how you guys balance both of those. So my first question would be how, when, when did you decide to film it? Um, and what led to that uh, thought process? Yeah. So the unique thing about this film is that nothing was really forced, you know, everything was really just kind of started on the passion that, I had, you know, I was a young man who had just recently left the military. I had started filming because I was walking in the jungles for Wildcat. And, you know, it just, I, I was filming because I had this love and this passion. I was never really filming for the idea of making a documentary. Uh, and I think that, you know, storytelling, you know, does it for you. Um, you know, things happen and, and, and as you're filming it and documenting it, just everything kind of like rolls into one. And so um, it just happened, you know, um, and then uh, kind of halfway through the project, uh, we bumped into Trevor and Melissa. And uh, from from there, it was just kind of like we wanted to do something. We wanted to kind of like, you know, show some love and show some kind of without giving too much away, just show some some real love and, and, and make like a conservational twist on on like these memories that we had made. Um, and then from there on, everything kind of just happened, you know, when the cameras came, the audio came, that's when I could really start getting some really incredible footage of, of these animals. And, um, you know, I feel like whenever you try to force something, it never really works as best as, as it could have done. But when you do something so naturally, you know, everything was happening for a reason. Um, it really makes the story powerful. And, um, and personally, it took me quite a bit to really open up my vulnerability, but mm. you, you know, you see a lot of the the vulnerability that I show in the documentary. And uh, a lot of that was kind of just based on trust. You know, when, when I was filming myself, I had to trust in the, in the, in the film, I had to trust in the process. And when I was being filmed and I was in an emotional place, I had to trust that these people weren't going to manipulate what I look like to be mm. super negative. Um, and so, you know, just, I, I guess that the filming just happened and, and it, it happened and, and, and basically to me personally, it made, it made this incredible film. So in, in those moments of when you're in the greater level of, of vulnerability, um, cause uh, for those listeners who may not know yet, um, you have struggled with PTSD due to fighting in Afghanistan. Um, when you're having, when you're feeling more vulnerable, how tempting was it to try to tell the cameras to push them away and how long did it take you to get used to the fact that you could be free to reveal yourself in front of them. You know, it was a it was a hard process, honestly. Um, I the original stuff, you know, I was kind of filming myself, and I was filming because uh, I don't even know why. You know, I just had to film because I felt like it was correct. I felt like it was the right thing to do. And you know, without some of these major bits of footage, it, it really wouldn't make the film what it is today and so you know when it came to like opening up and the vulnerability I just knew that I I, I had to I it's very hard to explain you know when you're in the middle of the forest and you're so upset and you're so vulnerable and you have that option to turn the camera off or you know just blame it on a dead battery or no no memory it wasn't 
it wasn't as easy to just turn it off. I had to do something. And, um, and I feel like with the, you know, the whole film team and everything like that, you know, cause we're a very small team. Um, you know, mm. a lot of these bigger productions have, you know, big sound and, you know, all of these different things, but when you're so intimate in the jungle as well with people, you can open up a little bit more than you could if you just were going back to, um, your hotel in the evening you know if we were staying on the same platforms for you know a week at a time before you know they would leave with hard drives full of footage um, and so you know with that um with that intimacy i think the vulnerability actually came out through that as well now one interesting quote that you have in the film you state that keanu which is the name of the uh second ocelot is saving you as you are saving him um how was keanu's growth synonymous with yours I, I feel like when um, you're in such a, a dark hole um, of depression, you have to have something to, to drag you out of it. And this, to me, came as a small two-week-old ocelot that had barely opened its eyes. You know, it needed feeding. It needed deworming. You know, he had, par he had parasites and he, was, he wasn't very healthy. And so instead of just being miserable and being sad and, you know, dwelling on my past and my, and my depression I had something that I had to look after without me this animal wouldn't have been where it you know very well or it could have potentially died and so for me personally I needed to have that kind of like thing in my life mm -hmm. and so for me I was saving him because without me as a mother he would not have had a mother and for Keanu, Keanu was saving me because I needed that push. I needed that drive. And um, there's a part in the film as well where, you know, I'm, I, I'm just saying thank you. I'm just saying thank you. And mm -hmm. a lot of people don't understand what I'm thanking, whether it be a greater being of a, of a God or whether it be thank you to this Oslo or, you know, it is, you know, I'm thanking the, this opportunity for Keanu because he gives me that drive. He gives me that kind of like everything that I need. I think another great uh, moment of the film or another great, uh, great quote in the film illustrates the difficulty of overcoming depression. Um, as you're in, um, in Peru, you mentioned that you, uh, you say that you're in the most beautiful place in the world. And you can't be happy. So how does that kind of encapsulate the difficulty of overcoming one's PTSD and depression? I think that there's no real way to overcome PTSD or depression. There's ways of dealing with it and there's ways that you can potentially learn how to live with it. I feel like anybody who has struggled with depression has their good days and they have their bad days, but ultimately your bad days will probably stay with you. Um, and if they're not every single day, they'll be few and far between. And, and, you know, as you gradually work on your own difficulties, in your own depression, that's when you really know how to manage yourself the the thing with the jungle and the thing with uh my depression is that being in nature definitely helps me but it doesn't cure me mm. and i think that that's the biggest thing is that if you struggle with depression don't bother going to the jungle and living a wild life because you're still going to be depressed you know mm. you're going to be surrounded by beauty and you might see some crazy things but you're also going to get eaten alive by mosquitoes you're going to get parasites you know you're going to you can't just go to this like incredible place and just expect good. Um, the, the best thing about the rainforest for me personally is that when you go there, you have to be accepted into the rainforest. And it's a very kind of spiritual thing, but you, you go there as a tourist, you know, and, and, and you get eaten alive and you just in, you know, you're just getting muddy and, and you're just, you know, a standard tourist. But after some time and after learning the land and after, you know, doing and spending some time there, you get accepted into it. And then with that acceptance, you know, it comes uh, this this incredible kind of feeling of just being a part of the jungle and and, uh, and you can enjoy it way more than you could if you were just there and, and not acclimatized. I think another interesting aspect is that the goal for Keanu the Ocelot is to let him go, let him be wild and basically let him out of your life is is the is a victory when he doesn't need you anymore or ideally we think it doesn't um how hard was it to prioritize its needs above your own at that moment 
So the project was to put a wildcat back into the wild. That is the end goal, no matter what happens, you know. Um, for me, I had to make sure that he was wild enough to be able to hunt for himself. He was wild enough so that he could defend off bigger predators. He was wild enough to say, okay, this is my territory, and also smart enough to say, you're bigger than me, you're going to kill me. This is now going to be my new territory. And, um, and so I... I had to, and I had to make myself understand this as well, because, you know, when you're with something that makes you feel so good, to let go of it is incredibly difficult. But at the end of the day, if I wasn't going to be able to let go, then I would have failed, not just him, but I would have failed myself. Mm -hmm. And so when it, when it comes down to it is when I'm doing something for something else, you know, if I'm, if I'm putting a wildcat back into the wild, they are my priority. Mm -hmm. And what I get from it is the sense of I have achieved it and I have done that. And so it, you know, honestly was extremely difficult, was very difficult actually to be able to love something so much, but, but you know, to let go. Mm -hmm. um, but the joy that I got of, you know, doing this incredible achievement has, has definitely made me a better person. So in, in the filming, how much of the film filming of uh, Wildcat was to help you in the process? How much was it to help the viewer go through whatever they're going through and watching it? That's a very good question, actually. Um, I don't know if I've thought about that. But what I can say is that when you watch Wildcat, um, you're going to go into it with kind of this, like, you're going to go into it with, a, with an idea. You know, things are going to, are going to kind of like be based around wildlife, but also kind of based around leaving the military and mental health. Um, but people are always going to walk away from a film with an idea of, they're going to take something personal away from it, whether it be family, whether it be wildlife, whether it be depression, whether it be going to war, people are going to go into this, documentary and they're going to leave with an idea of feeling kind of like touched by the film um, and I can guarantee that you know at least 70% of people watching this film will will go into this film and and leave feeling something um, but honestly like I you know I mentioned at the beginning this this documentary was never really made as a documentary it was made as a passion and mm -hmm. so this film hasn't really ever been about making it for people or making it for healing of myself it's been so that we can educate and we can show the power of nature and how nature and you know wild places are the most incredible healing places and and they need to be protected and and I and I will say for the listeners as well, it, it was a tremendous film. It is some parts of it that are, without giving any spoilers away, was absolutely crushing, and some that just it felt you know um, great as well. And so for our listeners, uh, when can the listeners find Wildcat? So um, Wildcat will be uh, out on Amazon Prime December thirtieth. It will also be in selected theaters on December twenty first. Um, but yeah, December 30th is when the world is going to be able to see it um, and is going to be able to see the ocelots. And, uh, you know, it makes me super, super happy to be able to say that uh, they're going to be recognized and they're going to be seen across the world. And uh, never in my wildest dreams did I ever think that when I was filming, you know, just as a, a passionate young man, that, that these, these bits of footage were going to be seen worldwide. Well, sir, it's been, uh, Mr. Turner, it's been an absolute honor to speak with you, and I look forward to talking to you about whatever next project you do after this. Thanks, Jeff. I really appreciate it.